hello guys hope you're doing well in today's video we're going to learn about forensic evidence that is just the basic introduction of forensic evidence and the various types or categories of evidence that we have in forensic science and we're going to begin with defining forensic science and find that forensic science is the science of associating people places and things involved in criminal or disputed activities on the other hand evidence is information whether oral testimony, documents or material objects in a legal investigation that makes a fact or proposition more or less likely. Most evidence is generated during the commission of a crime and recovered at the crime scene or at a place where the suspect or victim had been before or even after the crime. We have two basic classes of evidence that is physical evidence and biological evidence. Physical evidence is any tangible article that tends to prove or disapprove a point in question. And its physical evidence is of non-living origin and includes tire marks, paint, building materials, etc. Anything that is not of living origin. Physical evidence must be authenticated by a witness who testifies to the connection of the evidence with other facts in the case. The other class of evidence is biological evidence and this comes from a living source. These include DNA extracted from blood, semen, etc. And we find that botanical items like pollen and plants would also be considered as biological evidence. We move on to the categories of evidence. We have various categories of evidence and the first one is reconstructive evidence. And this is evidence that is relevant to understanding what actually happened at the crime scene in the sequence of events. That is just like recreating, reconstructing what actually happened. Like you no know, blood spatters, bullet holes, etc. can help determine exactly how the victim was attacked. Like now then we find that in the case of blood spatters you can find the number of blows, the position where they were, and all that. The next category of evidence is associative evidence. And this is used to link to create or eliminate a link between a suspect and a crime scene. That is just just as the word means to associate. So it's used to associate that is create a link or eliminate a link between a suspect and a crime scene. In this one, we have two kinds of associative evidence, that is class evidence and individual evidence. In class evidence, in this, we find that items that are, to some extent at least, must produce. Class evidence cannot tie a crime to any one individual. For example, in a crime scene, you might find a gun. It will not be unique because okay, it won't be unique because it's just a gun unless now you go into the details of what is going to lead you to that specific gun that was used to fire. In individual evidence, you find that these are items that can tie the crime to an individual. They go, this goes specific to a specific person. For example, fingerprints, DNA. Another category of evidence is direct evidence. And this, in this proof of facts by witnesses who saw acts done or heard words spoken. And it is information offered by witnesses who testify about their own knowledge of the facts. The other Category is circumstantial evidence and it is evidence based on inter on inference and not on personal knowledge or observation. And it only suggests an association with a past occurrence which is not observable which is not observed by an eyewitness. The other category is testimony. This is evidence given by a witness at the oath. And does not include evidence from documents and other physical evidence. We have exculpatory evidence. 
in this evidence that points to someone other than the suspect and therefore indicates innocence. This, one, this can be also referred to as alibi. We have trace evidence. This is evidence that appears as a small piece of the original source. For example, you might find a single hair strand or a single fiber. In trace evidence, a microscope is used to examine and analyze them. The microscope may be integrated into another scientific instrument so that the very small samples can be analyzed. We have transient evidence that is evidence that is by nature or the condition at the scene will lose its evidential value if not preserved and protected. For example, there was murder that took place in the open and if it rains, okay there was blood at the crime scene, since it's in the open it might train any time that blood may get washed away by the rain. In that case, the blood is transient evidence. Victim impact evidence. This is evidence of further sentencing to show the impact on the victim of the crime for which the defendant has been convicted. For example, in case of there is a situation where a parent was murdered and children are left suffering with maybe no one to take care of them or Okay, the way the parent used to take care of them. They can be taken to court just to show the impact that crime has on these children. We have corroborating evidence. And it's evidence, it's sub supplementary evidence that tends to strengthen or, or, or confirm initial evidence. We also have impression evidence. In this, we find that objects or materials that have retained the characteristics of other objects that have been physically pressed against them. Like an impression is created. Maybe someone stepped on something that was on a crime scene and they left an impression of their footprint on it. We have inadmissible evidence that is the testimony that the judges rules out as not proper and hence instruct the jury to disregard. We have prima facie evidence. This is evidence that in the judgment of law is good and sufficient to establish a given fact or chain of facts making a party's claim or defense. If such evidence is unexplained or uncontradicted, it's sufficient to sustain a favorable judgment for the issues it supports and it may be contradicted by other evidence. We have propensity evidence. This is evidence of a defendant's past wrongdoings that suggests the defendant had the propensity to commit a, a crime. Maybe a person with a, a, a serial killer. What you see? So the crimes they committed in the past there might be a possibility they committed a crime that's in question to admissible evidence evidence that can be legally and properly introduced in a civil or criminal trial those are the few those are some of the categories of evidence that we have stay tuned for more thank you